The story found in Moses 4 of Adam and Eve transgressing, hiding from God, and being taught by God the consequence of their action is very familiar to us. But how does this experience apply to us today? Eve transgressed a direct commandment of God not to eat of the forbidden fruit. And the book of Moses adds the phrase, neither shall ye touch it to God's command. Eve transgressed or went beyond the established limits or conditions that God had set forth in the Garden of Eden. Elder Dallin H. Oaks further explains this concept. The contrast between a sin and a transgression reminds us of the careful wording in the second article of faith. We believe that men will be punished for their own sins and not for Adam's transgression. It also echoes a familiar distinction in the law. Some acts, like murder, are crimes because they are inherently wrong. Other acts, like operating without a license, are crimes only because they are legally prohibited. Under these distinctions, the act that produced the fall was not a sin, inherently wrong, but a transgression, wrong because it was formally prohibited. After Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, they heard God's voice and went to hide themselves from the presence of the Lord God. When the Lord could not find Adam, the Lord called to Adam, Where goest thou? Then God asked Adam about what he and Eve had done. After they confess, God explains to Adam and Eve the consequences of their actions. When we make mistakes, whether it is a sin or transgression, we may also feel like hiding ourselves because we feel naked before God, because of our imperfections. Alma taught his son Coriantin, Ye cannot hide your crimes from God, and except you repent, they shall stand as a testimony against you at the last day. Even though God knows all things, He still expects us to give an accounting of what we have done as part of the repentance process. Elder Bruce R. McConkie taught, personal accountability for all of one's acts underlines the whole gospel plan and is the natural outgrowth of the law of free agency. After Adam and Eve honestly confessed and described the part that the serpent played in their transgression, God curses the serpent or Satan and puts enmity between him and the woman. He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. President Ezra Taft Benson taught that enmity means hatred toward, hostility to, or a state of opposition. As children of God, we must be in opposition to Satan's plan while we are here on the earth. Satan is also cursed above every beast of the field. Ellis T. Rasmussen explains the symbolic meaning of this curse. Being cursed is the very opposite of being blessed. God's blessing graciously invokes good, whereas his curse justly invokes evil upon one deserving it. Thus, Satan was informed through symbolic terms that he would not have the privilege of earth life that even cattle and beasts have. Satan was told, Dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. The consequences for Adam and Eve's transgression were not cursings, but the opportunity to have children and to work hard for their salvation during mortality, away from the presence of God. Eve would now become co-creators with God, as she is now able to bring forth children into this world. The Hebrew word for multiply is rabbah meaning to repeat over and over. It does not suggest greater sorrow, but rather repeated sorrow. The Hebrew word for sorrow in the Genesis account is from the word atzab, which means labor or pain. While these words suggest that toil and suffering would be a part of Eve's life, Eve did not view the conditions that came upon her through the fall to be a curse, but a blessing. As Eve began to understand more about the gospel of Jesus Christ, she exclaimed, Were it not for our transgression, we would never have had seed, 
and never should have known good and evil, and the joy of our redemption, and the eternal life which God giveth unto all the obedient. Concerning the phrase, that thy husband shall rule over thee, President Spencer W. Kimball said, I have a question about the word rule. It gives the wrong impression. I would prefer to use the word preside because that's what he does. A righteous husband presides over his wife and family. In Ephesians 5 and Doctrine and Covenants 121, the Lord gave clear instructions on how husbands should preside. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. No power or influence can or ought to be maintained by virtue of the priesthood, only by persuasion, by long-suffering, by gentleness and meekness, and by love unfeigned. To Adam, God explained that curse shall be the ground for thy sake. President Marin G. Romney pointed out that the curse was not placed upon Adam, but upon the ground for Adam's sake. Rather than a curse upon Adam, it was a blessing to him. Elder L. Whitney Clayton further clarifies this point. Adam was told, Cursed shall be the ground for thy sake, which meant for his benefit. And by the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Work is a continual burden, but is also a continual blessing for our sake. For it teaches lessons we can learn only by the sweat of our face. Adam and Eve will continue to learn from the Lord even though they need to leave the garden and his presence. Their hope in the Lord will increase as they learn line upon line, precept upon precept, just as each of us do on this earth. Remember to find joy in the Lord this week, just as Adam and Eve found joy in their redemption.